Hello everyone and welcome to the Extreme Pink channel. For today's video, uh, we're gonna do 6G. It's gonna be Inconel uh, Max Dig uh, or F34-F4X. <clears throat> uh, so the prep uh, is gonna be Feather Edge uh, for the internal cleaning. I'm just gonna use the carbide bit and clean it like half an inch from that edge. From outside, we're gonna remove the mild scale and uh, leave that feather edge okay that's how it should look like nice and clean it's gonna be purged it's uh, with a backing gas so we don't want any impurities inside even though Inconel is uh, it's not really easy to weld it's a little bit difficult to manipulate that puddle uh, okay now for the gap in 1 8 uh, I'm gonna use a bridge rod for tack. Uh, you can't do any root tacks or bridge tack with, with the wire itself. It gotta be gotta be rod. So I'm just gonna put one tack on the 12 o'clock. And we're gonna flip it uh, flip it around. Check for the gap if it's even. Then we're gonna put another tack at six o'clock. Okay, gap looks good. Just gonna put one on the six o'clock. Once where that tack is done, we're gonna check for the gap on uh, two sides or three or nine o'clock. If it's good, we're gonna you put whatever side you like. If it's one side uh, got a little bit more gap, you can put there just to make it even. Okay, we got three tacks. <clears throat> now we're gonna position in a positioner. You see, I got a hole here that's for purge. This is where I connect my uh, purge hose. So we can uh, purge that spool. I'm just gonna tack it in positioner so we can leave it in a 45 degree angle. Okay, now we got a 45, I'm gonna lock it. So the examiner already marked that spool. It's, uh, that's how he knows that stop. So you can cut it or flip it or whatever. So for the filler wire, uh, it's uh, Incredo 625, it's uh, uh, chrome uh, it's a decal chrome moly dash 3 as you know that um, uh, Inconel is a super alloy that possess high strength properties and resistance to elevated temperatures so this is my plan planning from the outside I'm gonna use a 332 for the root playing on the bottom side to keep the rod inside and uh, try to keep the rod in that puddle. Uh, Inconel refers to a group of specific nickel chromium alloys that are used in different welding processes. I don't know if you guys uh, have much experience with uh, Inconel. It's a, it's a little bit difficult to manipulate that puddle. It's, uh, it's like lots of impurities inside. Uh, so for the purge, I'm gonna go up 30. Just leave it to have, to have nice, good coverage. Just gonna check I got a nice flow. Just gonna leave it for a, for a couple minutes. Uh, well, it can be difficult because the welds uh, that are created have a tendency to crack. And you're gonna see later. I'm gonna show you on a, uh, on a video. It's actually how you get it. Uh, <clears throat> impurities on the top of your weld and it's, uh, it's it's a little bit difficult to stretch okay that's the plan you can do both uh, both things you can do from the inside like a back fitting uh, freehand I'm gonna use a freehand okay I'm gonna start here the only problem I got here uh, I set up purge on 30 but I forget to lower it down so it's pushing my puddle out as you can see I'm just gonna push a little bit more and then I'm gonna stop I'm gonna lower it down like to 15 okay now I'm gonna cut that tack and uh, I'm gonna grind that uh, stop as you can see there's a little the way how it pushed outside so I'm gonna I ha I'll have to grind that grind it out and continue okay now for the continue part preheat and uh, start start adding uh, wire Try to try to try to keep the the wire in the puddle. 
it's kind of easier uh, but I mean things change as always so do what you can try to keep it in the puddle especially on the bottom side all when once I get up uh, to 10 o'clock then I might start pulling out and maybe just dip the sides Yeah, I'm just leaning uh, the bottom side of the cup inside that uh, groove inside that bevel just to rest my hand a little bit I'm a little bit shaky for this video so the top part that's what I'm doing I'm just dipping sides Okay, now I'm gonna stop. Okay, now we can uh, remove those two tacks on this side. Grind all those stops and starts, and you can continue on uh, this side. So for the, this side, I try to keep my rod inside the inside that root. As I said, especially on the bottom part, you can pull it out slowly once you get up on uh, up on the uh, two o'clock. Just use precaution because uh, the gravity might sag down. We have some grapes. That's why I usually like a little bit stronger purge, so it forms my uh, root inside a little bit better, especially to prevent uh, grapes. It's not that beautiful outside as I said it's a uh, it's a little bit difficult there's lots of impurities it, it actually it looks like it's uh, because all that uh, composition that contains uh, that broad you got a copper got uh, lots of different materials okay the root I forgot to take a shot of the root a little bit earlier so I kind of have not much room here to make a nice clear shot the root really looks good, maybe a little bit heavier on one side, but uh, that's, that's uh, completely fine. Uh, as you can see, the root pass from the outside doesn't look really beautiful. It doesn't have to be. It's uh, not a beauty contest, as long as it's uh, quality, it should be fine. That's what I'm adding right now on the top side. I'm just dipping that rod, so I'm going to remelt uh, that uh, little built up uneven spots that I have on the root pass. So make it nice and uh, even for my hot pass. So every other passes, field pass, all the way up to the flush is going to be easier. For the hot pass, I'm, uh, I'm around 120 and 125. I'm just standing on the sides as I said I just want to make it uh, nice and even because that uh, outside root pass was a little bit uneven a couple build-ups and couple a couple few spots okay for the hot pass that's it that's what I want uh, for Inconel it's really important to run a buffing wheel every time every pass run a buffing wheel you want to you want to have a clean each pass there's a lots of impurities inside and uh, okay so now for the fill pass first pass I'm gonna start on, on the top side I'm still using 332 rod for hot pass and for uh, this fill pass amps uh, I think it's 130 Okay, we're gonna run one on the top and then one on the bottom and that's what that's what it is pretty much that's the game all the way up to the flush you just want to put those uh, layers put a nice beads make it all nice and even all the way to the up as I said clean each pass now I'm gonna go again on the top side all the way up and then we're gonna like I go top to the middle and then from the bottom to that uh, half of that top pass 
and then once you get to the wider area then we're gonna then you're gonna have to go like three passes even four depends yeah that's the top pass top field pass i don't know if you can see here on this shot how actually that uh, that puddle how actually it's not easy it's not easy to to manipulate it's uh like that impurity inside it's hard to control that's why it's a good habit to keep that road constantly inside that puddle try to keep it inside as much as you can if you can if not i mean you gotta do what you what you have to do you can uh, still pull it out and put it in and but still kind of that connection is uh, it's a little bit harder you know every time you continue it's a little bit to connect to establish that uh, nice flow okay now i'm using 1.8 rod from now on i'm gonna be using 1.8 all the way up to the flash now it's pretty much it's the game just uh fill fill all the way up clean it clean each pass don't go too cold go even up you can go 150 if you want 150 160 whatever you feel like whatever you feel most comfortable with that uh, amperage you can handle okay i did one on the top now i'm gonna do the bottom the way how you feel and you just want to make it make it uh, kind of even level if you do proper steps okay i speed up and uh, now we got a flash fill to flash three passes pretty much that's what it is okay so for the cap for the cap i'm using 332 rod and I waited for uh, maybe half an hour just to cool down. You know, it's easier to put it, uh, to start doing cap. So 332 amps, uh, 130. Walk in the cap. Got to keep rod in the puddle as much as you can. Keep it on a, on the top side of the puddle and then just uh, stretch it down. Keep your line straight as much as you can let that edge be your kind of guide so you just want to cover and then just follow that that puddle that edge that you got okay for the second pass same thing 332 start preheat and uh, find yourself uh, you can go half of that you can cover half of that route but half of that uh, first pass but you don't have to go that that wide with that step usually it's like just cover 25 percent of that uh, first pass as i said you can see like it's uh, it's really it's really give you it's really hard to manipulate that puddle okay for the third pass same thing Try to plan, you know, calculate how much passes you're gonna need. Depends from the steps, how wide you're going, how hot you, you're running. You can use 1.8 rod. I didn't want to go with 1.8, I'm just 3.32. Yeah, that's my... Uh, third pass clean after each pass okay and then for the fourth pass for the fourth uh, pass of the cap final one we got a little groove here between that weld and uh, and the pipe it's like a little wagon track here so i'm just gonna dip but well, the reason why i'm dipping here on the top and not holding the wire inside the puddle is just uh, because that little groove I want to I'm just trying to be sure that everything is uh, melted like uh, 100% that I'm going to melt the material and uh, and the wire just so I can so they're going to be blended 100%
I mean, both techniques are good when you're doing 6G, especially on a TIG. In 99%, I'm pretty much walking the cup on my route and my feel and head, feel and, uh, feel and cap and passes, but uh, you gotta be, you just gotta be sure you run hot and do small steps, you know, any missteps, something you can, uh, you can maybe see it later on a, on a band test. Okay, that's it for the, for the, for the weld part is down. Now we're gonna cut it, all that hard work. It's gonna be a nice and cut with a acetylene torch. We're gonna cut in uh, four pieces. Then we're gonna grind. So you got a two root and two face. Okay, we got a grind root, sides, cap, around the edges. Don't chase too too deep. Even if you got something, you can something. There's lots of cases like they, there is some uh, spots like porosity, but that's uh, mostly from uh, from cutting from that torch they're using to cut those pieces. So though, even if you got, don't go too deep. Don't chase it. Round edges. And now we're gonna go for bent test. Okay, as I said, we got um, two root and uh, two face bend. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen to this heartbreaker machine. Well, if you did proper steps, like I showed you in this video, it shouldn't be worried much. Just go nice and slow, you know. Do proper steps and everything should be alright. Okay, first piece looks good. Second one, the same. Third. And the last one. That's it. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please support, subscribe, like, and see you in the next one. Bye.